John, this is your fifth combine as the Titans general manager. Has your approach changed at all since you started in 2016? Well, we'll see. This year is a little different format-wise, but you know, I would say what we try to get from the combine um, is the same. You know, you've got to get the medical on the players. It's our first exposure to a lot of these players. You know, engaging with them, talking with them, um, and then their performance on the field. You know, which kind of really equates to their athleticism that we see on tape. You mentioned that the format is a little bit different this year. Of all the changes that are happening, which one impacts you the most? Probably the, the formal interviews. Um, you know, those are really where they used to be at night. Those are spread out throughout the course of, of the day, um, and, and some go into the night until the workouts start. The workouts are in prime time. Um, that's going to be a, a change for us. And, you know, with all of the accommodations that, that were made for TV, we lost 15 interviews. So there's 15 less players that we get to talk to. Uh, so we'll have to roll our sleeves up and, and, get, and hit the road this spring and, and go see these guys at Pro Days. Throughout the month of February, I don't know if you're aware of this, but the Tennessee Titans have been a pretty widely talked about franchise. Do you notice that? Does that bother you? Does that impact the way you do business here? No, I mean, it's great exposure for, for, our, for our brand. It's great exposure for our team, um, for Amy and her family, uh, what she has done, what their family has done for the organization, for the city of Nashville. Um, it's, it's fun. Um, and, and we're looking forward to, to kind of retool on this roster and, and the, get ready for the 2020 season. With the Titans being such a topic of conversation and with every word that you say being parsed everywhere, do you feel like you have to be careful about what you say, particularly at places like here at the Combine? Yeah, it's all about having a poker face. You know, you, you can't give any tells. Um, you know, we're working hard to the, – the 2020 Titans are going to look different than the 2019 Titans. Um, that's – Every team's going to look different. There's rookies, there's free agency, there's a lot of stuff that goes on. Um, and the decisions that we make um, are going to um, have a pretty important impact on our football team next year. And um, we don't want other teams to know what we're doing. A lot of talk about the current CBA and maybe another CBA and it changing some of the terms of free agency and elsewhere. Has that pending slowed you down at all in terms of what you've been doing this offseason? Are you having to wait? Well, I, whenever they tell us the CBA is done, like I'll read it on ESPN and NFL Network like everybody else. Um, but until then, it's, it's business as usual. We've got some meetings with, um, with agents um, that represent our players um, here this week at the Combine. Um, and we're continuing to, to work through the roster and have discussions about how we're going to retool it. Your first two moves of this offseason were re-signing Anthony Ferkser, the tight end, and wide receiver Cam Batson. Why were those two first? Um, well, those deals were a little; those were a little easier uh, to do. There was a little; they were a little less complicated. Um, so glad, uh, glad to have the, uh, both those guys back. You know, unfortunately, Cam, you know, missed most of the season or all the season with that injury. Um, so look forward to having both those guys back next fall. Lots of reports and lots of people saying that it's a great year for cornerbacks, defensive backs overall, and wide receivers. From your initial look at this thing, do you agree with that? Yes. <laughs> Bottom line, you're pleased with that area. No, there's a lot of positions that have good players at it, but there, there are several receivers this year. Um, you know, I think you can get good players throughout the course of the draft. You know, just looking at our board, that's a pretty deep position. And the same thing with, with that defensive back group. Um, a lot of really athletic guys, a lot of long corners, it seems like, in this draft, too. Of all the workouts, is the 40-yard dash the one that you pay the most attention to? Um... From a timing standpoint, I think it, it's certainly it's it's a pretty important factor. Um, but for other positions, it's it's vertical jump. You're checking their explosion. Um, for certain positions, you're looking at the short shuttle. You know how 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 can they bend? How quickly can they get out um, of cumbersome situations? Um, so everything plays a role. All right. So let's talk about interviews to wrap up for just a second. In all your time being here in Indianapolis. Do you have an all-time favorite interview? Absolutely. Okay. So there was this player, I won't tell you who it is, and I'm asking him the question, um, so how's school going? How far are you from graduating? And he says, well, I'm so many hours short. And I was like, well, what are you getting your degree in? He says, general studies. And I say, well, what do you want to do with that? And he goes, I want to be an architect. So I said, why didn't you study like architecture? And he goes, that's what I told my advisor. <laughs> Finally, how is Vrabel asking the questions in the interview room? Is he one of the all-time greats? Um, we play off each other. It's a little good cop, bad cop. Um, 
you know, we'll stand up and, and let them like punch us sometimes, not in the face, like and use their technique. Like, how are you going to play this? If I'm this, if like, if, if you're a gunner and I'm a vice and I'm lined up here, how, how are you going to play me? And then, you know, we'll punch them a little bit. So just try to get them off their 15 minute can spiel.